here with uh, John Shoemaker, who's uh, been in the Dodger system almost since I can remember. Uh, you came up to Tommy, didn't you? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, you've been around a long time, 30 what years? This is actually year number 35. I signed as a minor leaguer back in 1977. Four minor league seasons as a player. And uh, starting in 81, I began coaching and instructing in the Dodger minor leagues and have been there ever since. It's a terrific organization. I'm happy and proud to be a Dodger. Uh, I like to hear that. It's been kind of a rough year. We won't really go there about what's happened on the major league level, but it uh, looks like there's a lot of good things happening in the minor league level. Well, I would say over the last 10 years, uh, the Dodger uh, scouting system has uh, really put some good players into our minor league system. And sometimes organizations go through peaks and valleys. Your major league team might be strong and your minor league team might be strong or one might be weak. And uh, you're just always hoping that you can send some ball players up to help the major league club. And if you look at the Dodger roster right now, there are some players that have just been drafted within the last uh, six to eight years that are up in the big leagues right now. And, there have been some guys that have been called up that have just been drafted two or three years ago. So uh, the future, I feel, does look bright for the Dodgers. I'm sure right now everybody in Los Angeles uh, has been disappointed with the way the Major League team has played. But you have to go out and play the season. You can't blame any one individual. You just go play, and it's a collective effort. Uh, we, the Dodgers, need to be back on top of the division, and that's what everyone's pushing forward to. You guys have been on a little bit of a slide this year, but you've got a lot of uh, good players stepping up. Uh, some guys like Garrett Gould and you know Zach Lee just impresses me with that, his athleticism and his ability. Uh, who else should we be watching on, on the loons that maybe are under the radar that you think uh, might be a surprise to us down the road? Well, you mentioned uh, a couple of our players that were high draft picks, Zach Lee being drafted number one uh, last year and a, a couple years ago, Garrett Gould being a, a second round draft pick. Uh, most of the kids that we have playing right here right now have, uh, have played really hard this year. Um, we've got some players who played really well last year in Ogden, put up some good numbers like Landry, Akins, and Garcia. And uh, so far, the numbers that they put up in Ogden last year, they haven't been able to do that here. It's a little bit tougher, tougher league. Uh, we had Blake Dean, who was at first base in Ogden. Uh, Cassio Ryder was an infield. Bosnick, uh, Chris Jacobs played in Ogden last year a little bit here. Uh, he's doing a good job. So we're just trying to work everybody out and uh, play everybody. Uh, we don't feel like we have anybody here that is right on the cuff of being a big leaguer, but we also don't have anybody here that we want to rule out. As long as you have that uniform on, uh, things can happen quickly, and uh, we just hope that some of these kids can improve and maybe four or five years be wearing the Dodger uniform or another uniform of another major league club because that's their goal. You may see a guy for struggle for two or three years and all of a sudden the light comes on. What, what causes that? What's your opinion? Why does that happen like it does sometimes with some players? Confidence is probably the main thing. Uh, a player all of a sudden realizes that I can do this and I can play in this league and I'm going to improve. You've heard stories of a lot of players who were very marginal players in college and went to the first year in pro ball and didn't hit real well and all of a sudden figured out what the pro game was all about. Joe Amalfitano, a former Dodger coach, used a phrase and it's so true, aptitude and retention. Or do you have the aptitude to be able to make the adjustment? And then if I come back and see you in a month, do you have the retention that you can continue to do that? And that's really a terrific line for baseball. If you can't make an adjustment, you probably won't advance. And if you can't retain it, you'll probably get lost maybe at the level that you're playing at. Um, how, how has it been working with the youngsters down here at A? Because that's different from maybe when you were Triple A, uh, you know you've got some more seasoned people. You've got some vets that may have been around and on the cusp and never quite making it. And here you've got a bunch of wide-eyed youngsters, for the most part. That you know, how, how's that been for you? Well, I've always felt that the lower levels need more teaching, more coaching, more tutoring, more instructing, more just everything. So I feel happy to be placed in this position 
because I feel that that's one of my strengths, that I have patience and I have the ability to motivate and teach and show the guys what they're supposed to do. Um, working with double A AA and triple A guys, it's more of just keeping them focused and more game strategy with pitching, double switching, and still you have to have control and leadership skills, but uh, I actually like working with the younger guys for the reasons I just mentioned. Uh, it's, a, it's an awful lot of work, and uh, most of them right at this moment don't have that aptitude and retention yet. Uh, and when they get it, uh, they're going to be moving forward. I was just talking to Garrett a little bit ago, and he was kind of, he didn't, he didn't call it aptitude and retention, but he said, I'm kind of listening to the coaches better. And, uh, and uh, you know, I said, kind of maturity. And he said, yeah. And, you know, when you're 20 years old, it's kind of hard to, you know, it's kind of hard to listen to somebody else because you think you know it all. Well, a lot of the kids that have come here have been successful in their leagues and maybe a high school or college they've been successful and they come to pro ball. And uh, Tommy Lasorda presents it very well. All of those people that you played against in college or high school that you got out easy and struck out, they're not here. The guys that you had trouble getting out and maybe hit you a little bit, those are the guys that are in pro ball. So everybody's good here. Uh, Garrett made a good point that you're going to be hearing a lot of different things from your coaches and instructors, and it's a learning process. You're learning things every day. I don't think anybody goes through life without maybe picking up one small thing and trying to learn. You can learn not only from someone, but you can learn maybe from your own mistakes, whether it's uh, physical or mental or a combination of both. Now, with all the, and it's been highly pub publicized, obviously, with all the problems the Dodgers are having this year, um, have you seen any difference in the minor league operations, really? I haven't seen anything different at all. Uh, our minor league operations are run very well by Dijon Watson, Chris Haydocks, his assistant, and uh, we're trying to produce players to get to the next level. Um, I don't really know much about what's happening with the Dodger ownership and maybe possible sale of the Dodgers. We don't really get involved in that. Uh, we have a big job here. And so far, everything's been uh, the same as it was as as it was last year, as it was five years ago. I haven't seen haven't seen any changes. So uh, we're just uh, plugging right along and trying to get the Dodgers back to the top of the Western Division. If you had one thing you could say to Dodger fans across the world, what would that be about the team's futures? Well, I don't know what to say about the future. Um, uh, that's just too hard to predict. But I would say this: that if you're a Dodger fan. Uh, you're cheering for the best organization in baseball, and I really mean that. Uh, it's been since 1988 since the Dodgers won the World Series, and maybe that matters to some, that maybe the Dodgers aren't good anymore and they're not a good organization. I, I don't feel that way. Um, if you start looking at the, uh, every other organization in baseball, everybody's had some pluses and some minuses, and right now the Dodgers are going through some difficult stages, but if you get so preoccupied with looking at what's closed up in front of you and shutting something out you might not see what's open towards you so I think the Dodger future is going to be bright it's the richest uh, tradition and history in all of professional sports in my opinion and uh, I don't think the Dodger fans have anything to be ashamed of and uh, just hope that we can have a good season uh, the rest of the year and in the, in the future. Glad to hear that John thank you very much for your time. No I appreciate it. My, my pleasure.